Hi, welcome to my first Ask Austin vlog. Today I'm speaking to Lucy Black, humanist celebrant from Dundee, about all things wedding ceremonies. Hi Lucy, thanks for joining us today. How are you doing? I'm good, thank you Austin. How are you? Yeah, I'm good, thanks. Yeah. So Lucy and I met uh, last year. We worked at a wedding of Kelly and Daniel at Murray's Hall uh, near Perth. And we've kind of kept in touch since then, although we've not worked together. Um, we've been helping each other out with social media and that kind of thing. So, so it's built up a great wee relationship there. Um, so you're obviously a humanist celebrant and you work for Fuse Ceremonies. Do you want to tell us a little bit about what you do? Of course. So Fuse Ceremonies are a humanist organisation in Scotland. And there are around 40 odd celebrants that now work with Fuse. And myself, I am legally registered as a marriage officer, so I can legally marry folk around Scotland, as it's all legally binding, and I also conduct naming days as well. So if any couple wishes to have a humanist ceremony, it is non-religious, they would come to me, we would have a chat, we would build up a bit of a rapport, and then we would go forward, sort of organising couples meetings, me telling them a bit, a little bit about symbolic gestures, vows, readings, things like that. And it's just getting to know them and what they want to include in their wedding day. Brilliant. Sounds really interesting. So I know some of the guys do funerals as well, but you, you don't do them at the moment. I don't do them at the moment. <coughs> I've also got my own business as well and four young children. So it is yeah. something I you know, hope to do in the future. But for now, having my little business, doing the weddings and the naming days is perfect for me. And I guess this is a perfect um, sort of job for you because you can kind of work round round the family as well, with it being at we mainly at weekends. Definitely. So the beauty of it for myself that our diaries are booked so far in advance, we can sort of organise things like childcare. We know that we will be booked tight on that weekend, even just for sort of sorting things with the kids and things like that. It works really, really well. And because we are not based in an office, we work from home. It's just being able to organise things like meetings like this. We can do them yep. virtually at the moment in the evenings. And I'm always there on sort of Facebook, Instagram to answer any messages and sort of questions that any couples will have at any time of the day. Yeah. 24 7, never switch off. Well, I know. <laughs> we're, we're controlled by fairy dust. That's what I like to tell my couples. <laughs> Brilliant. So, obviously, it's a tough time at the moment. Um, I know myself, I've been working with couples to rearrange weddings that have had to be postponed and um, so I guess you're in the same boat what have you been doing for your couples over the last few weeks? Definitely so I don't think any of us would have ever thought something like this would have happened in our lifetime um, and hearing of it back in sort of January you know over the world I don't think we ever thought it would come to Britain and have such a lockdown effect as what, what it's had. So obviously um, in March, we had to sort of postpone my last ceremonies in March. So they have rebooked, they've rescheduled, we've got them all sorted out. And April into May as well, we're having to reschedule those as the registrars have actually closed at the moment and they're not taking on any legal registrations for weddings and they're not registering any births at the moment either. Okay. So I'm contacting all my couples, I'm rebooking them. A lot of them are for the end of this year or into 2021. But as I mentioned, it's just great being able to support them, contact them, tell them to just lean on me if they've got any questions. Of course, with their other suppliers as well, things like videographers, photographers and whatnot, we've all got to work together to make sure that that couple's day comes together as it should have done, yeah. you know, later in the year into next year and it'll be as I tell them, it'll be bigger and better yeah. when their day actually comes around. Yeah, it'll be worth it when it happens. I know we, we need to work together as a team and that's what we've been speaking about when we've been chatting online. Um, yeah, we're all in this together, so we'll, you know, we'll make it work. But it must be a nightmare for these couples, you know, having to having to line everybody up. Um, and I guess you're not always going to have a situation where you can have the people that you'd previously booked. But yeah, you just need to make it work. Definitely. Good stuff. So on a, a regular year, how many um, ceremonies, weddings would you generally do? So I think the average is about 40 to 45. Um, I was looking at nearly 60 for this year, 2020. Wow. Um, people like that number sort of thing, yeah. 202. So that's why that's worked out yeah. well. But 
you know, a lot of those are now getting moved into next year. Um, with our diaries, we always say as being humanists that, you know, we do book up quite far in advance. So it's also, it's always something to, you know, really focus on. And I always recommend to my couples, so if you're venue or whenever you're getting married, your photographer, videographer, if you're humanist or whoever's going to be conducting your ceremony and your band or DJ, because they're the folk that can only really do one thing mm -hmm. on a given day. Yeah. No, absolutely. I'm exactly the same. Generally, videographers tend to be a bit further down the line, but they certainly are becoming more, more upfront than than they used to be. So, so that's good. Um, so, what what are the kind of main differences between a humanist ceremony and a traditional church ceremony? Ceremony. Okay, so, humanist ceremonies are non-religious. So, we get most folk that come to us want a non-religious ceremony. There are also couples that maybe one follows one belief and the other something different. Mm -hmm. So it just gives you that great middle ground to be able to, you're not going too far right or too far left if you want to put it that way. You yep. can just have a middle ground and you can bring in religious content if you want to. The only thing with that is that we ask it's done after any legal vows and the legal declaration and okay. the signing. So it gives you opportunities to do traditional things as well in the religious sort of sense. And where we differ slightly to the registrars, and as I mentioned earlier, we don't work from an office. We are self-employed, um, we support FUSE, we support the FUSE Foundation as well, but it's just being able to contact our couples mm -hmm. at any sort of given time, which is great, yep. and having that flexibility, and just building up a bit more of a rapport as well. Brilliant. So what made you decide to become a humanist? You've only been doing it a few years, is that right? Yeah, so I trained at the end of November 2017, and conducted my first wedding March 2018, so mm -hmm. two years of conducting. Um, and the reason that I wanted to become a humanist because when my youngest child was born, Murray, he was born quite early and he was very poorly in hospital. So we weren't sure if he was going to be with us or not. Mm -hmm. And because neither of us are religious, we looked into what sort of funeral we would have for him if, you know, if that came to that. Thankfully, yeah. it didn't. Um, and then I thought, you know, this is such a, it's a great way for folks to have their send-offs if mm -hmm. they're not religious. Mm -hmm. And then that's when I sort of started looking at the Humanist weddings and the sort of naming days as well, and I thought that's something I have a real passion, and yeah. I also love helping folk. You know, I'm always saying to folk, "If you need a chat, blah blah yeah. blah," it's not just me doing all the speaking all the time. So, you know, it's just something I really love. Right, great, good stuff. So, what you know, if a couple was looking to pick a humanist, what what would you say are the things that they should be looking out for? What what sort of questions should they be asking the the humanist? So when I do pre-book meetings, that's what I call them. So if somebody wants to catch up, if the couple want to catch up and have a sort of coffee, a few questions and whatnot, it's just about building up a rapport as well. Yeah. So it's ensuring that you and your celebrant get on, first of all, and that your celebrant understands what you want to include. Um, just asking them that if they're sure that it's a humanist ceremony one, if there's any symbolic gestures, so we can do things like hand fasting, which is the time of the knot, drinking from the clay, lots of different things. So it's just ensuring that you have that rapport with your celebrant. Mm -hmm. Everybody is different. Every couple is different. And what I always say to my couples is that their wedding day should be a reflection of the way that they are together as a couple. Don't just stand there and do something that you would never do. Mm -hmm. Don't act a way that you would never act. If you're, you have a, like, a little bit of humour, have a bit of humour in your ceremony. Yep. If you are quite traditional, you know, and you are quite serious in your day to day, go with the celebrant that you know that you can sort of guide for. Somebody can guide you, and that you make sure that you feel comfortable to be able to contact them and speak with them. Yeah, yeah. cool, excellent. How much effort is involved in preparing a ceremony? Because I know you. You put loads of posts up about you writing your um, your ceremonies, etc. You know what, what else is involved? So it's meeting. So when they book, it's managing our diaries, of course. Yeah. Um, so they book, and then we organise our couples meetings. I tend to do them about four, five, six months before their wedding day. So it just means that there's enough time to make any changes. So once I've met the couple, that lasts about ninety minutes. I normally say for the couples meeting. And that's going through everything. So letting them know about the legalities with their paperwork, all their vows, symbolic gestures, things that they can include. Mm -hmm. It's me giving them ideas, but all the choices are theirs because it's their wedding. Yep. 
and then I go away and I write up the script and you know that can take two to three hours to write a ceremony longer than that dependent on how big their story is and things like that that they want to include and then it's sending it to the couple so that they can proofread it and then if they've got edits it's then editing it so you know for each ceremony i think you're probably putting in about between six to ten hours and then that's including going there an hour before the actual yeah. wedding day conducting the wedding as well and just probably a wee bit of a laugh with them and getting the yeah. celebrate selfie yeah the absolutely party. you like your selfies don't you yeah <laughs> 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 yeah, it's funny because I didn't realise there was so much involved. Um, you know, I think a lot of people probably think it's just a case of having a meeting and then turning up on the day and, you know, doing the yeah. ceremony. But, yeah, there's loads. It really is. It's all the behind-the-scenes work that folk don't see. Yeah. Um, and I think, the, the, again, the beauty of a human ceremony for the couple, from their point of view, is that it's very bespoke. So no, no, no ceremony I've conducted has been the same as another ceremony. Yeah. It's about that couple. So that's where that beauty lies. You're mm -hmm. getting that bespoke and uniqueness for your own wedding. Day. Yeah, excellent. Cool. So most of us have heard about hand fastening, quake, the quake um, symbolic gestures that you mentioned there. What other gestures are there that people are doing? I guess there's probably lots of different ones, but. There are, there's lots and lots of different ones and we always tend, we always link in on, when we do our couples meeting, we um, link into an email the symbolic gestures that we have just written up, but yeah. then again, who can go onto Google or have a look in a book and if something sticks out that we haven't got written down, then we are open for that, you know, bring that in. It's, especially when you have um, couples from different countries, so I had one Syrian bride he was marrying a Scottish man, and they did do hand fasting, but they were different. It different. was thought she brought in her Syrian fabric, so you know, right. just bringing in different cultures as well is lovely. But there's things like candle lighting, so folk are like a unity candle, so mm -hmm. that represents the sort of two individuals, the two, the one couple, one part, half of the couple, the second half coming together, and it's just uniting in a marriage as well. Although they're already in a relationship, yeah. it's just taking that step further. Um, things like sand ceremonies, which I always think works really well if there is a family that have children, so already had their kids, but they've then decided to get married. So doing the sand blending, and that involves the children as well, yeah. and that's just showing the sort of blending of a family unit which can never be unpicked. So it's just a lovely way to do that. So. Excellent. So if somebody was wanting to become a humanist what's 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 the route in, in doing that do fuse have a training course or something that they put yes. you through or it, it has changed since i started so like i mentioned earlier i did my training in november 2017 but last year um Anne, who is the sort of founder of fuse yeah. she set up the training academy so it's called the celebrant training academy and it's also recognized it's a recognized qualification so anybody that is now coming in to FUSE, it's the only organisation that offers this recognised qualification. We'll go through the training process, um, a lot of it's online but they get the support as well which is great. And then they would then shadow sort of ceremonies. Um, so yeah, so it's a really, it's a great way, so you're also getting a qualification now yeah. as well as doing the training. Great, great, that sounds really good. Um, so, a bit of fun here, what do you like best about being a humanist celebrant and what don't you like? Okay, so my favourite thing is being able to get out of the house from the four peaks, as I like to call them, um, and just having a chat with actual adults, which is amazing. But um, no, I just love meeting folk. I'm such a people person, so and every couple that I meet, I just feel like I'm building up a friendship with them as well. And they open up to me, you know, not everybody's got this magical life and this magical relationship. Folk do go through struggles. Yeah. Folk have had hardships. Folk have you know, experience lost, lost family members and whatnot. So just being that confidant as well, just for them to open up to, is such a privilege for me. Yeah. And I love writing. I I've never, I had never written before I started with Fuse. So just learning that and starting fresh and all these different ideas and having the continual support from Fuse as well. They do a lot of training with us um, and we try and do meetups every week and whatnot as well as a team. So it's just that support um, network and having Brilliant. these other celebrants to speak to, which is great. So what have you been doing to keep yourself busy? You obviously mentioned you've got kids, so I guess you've been spending a lot of time with them. You've been Not watching much time <laughs> Watching much telly or? So I've tried every day to persuade them to go for their walk, their social distancing, safe walk, yeah. and we have done that. 
the beauty at the moment is that a lot, I think it's on every city, I'm not sure, but Dundee anyway at least, all the kids are drawing the rainbows. Yes. Um, and putting them in the window to show the support for the NHS, but also for all the key workers. Mm. You know, they're, everybody's doing a great job. So we've been taking our pads and noting down how many rainbows we find. Last week we were doing some school work, which was stressful. Yeah. Um, but this week it's just taking that pressure off because it's now the school holidays in Dundee, if they had been at school. Mm-hmm. We're just having fun. We're getting out in the garden. It's been nice weather. And, you know, I've got an old granny who's 94, so just safely delivering her yeah. sort of meals on her doorstep and speaking to her through the window and stuff. Oh. So we're kept busy. Yeah, it's funny, we were talking about it earlier, I think families have become closer together because they're obviously spending so much time together, which is nice, because yeah. you know, we've all got busy lives, we probably don't spend enough time with our, our kids, um, so yeah, I've certainly enjoyed that um, so interaction with them a bit more than I would normally do, so, so it's been it's good. It's so true, because your boys are teenagers now. So well, it's... yeah, Alex is, um, Flynn's 11, so yeah, you know, a couple of years, but um, yeah, it's it's nice. It's really nice. Yeah, not obviously a great situation, but it's nice being able to spend I time with them. Spending time, quality time. Yeah, absolutely. So, in terms of people want to follow you, are you on the normal social networks, etc.? I am. I'm not very good at Twitter, so <laughs> you know what I'm like with any sort, anything that's computer based, or any sort of thing like that. I'm terrible, but I know how to work Facebook, so Lucy Bell Human Celebrant, and also. Uh, Instagram, which is the same Lucy Black, Humanist Cell, but um, the, yeah, that's it. And then also on the Fuse page as well, up here, there's Fuse Ceremonies, so fuseceremonies.co.uk, and you can find all the celebrants' profiles, so you can have a read about me, and it also offers you the date. So if you have a date in mind, if you are a couple looking to book, you like what you see, or you've had a chat with that person, mm-hmm. there's an online calendar, so you can click on your date, and it'll give you all the celebrants that are available. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Excellent. I'll put your contact details in the post on YouTube. Um, yeah, excellent. So, listen, thanks very much for your time. Get back to the creeps. Um, oh, I know, they're sleeping. <laughs> of course, yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, thanks again, Lucy. Thank you so much. Cheers. Awesome. Take care. Thanks, Lucy, for that chat. It was really interesting finding out all about humanist celebrants. If you're not subscribed to the channel, please subscribe above and turn on the notifications so you're first to hear about our new videos. Until the next time, thanks.